Okay, so what I've done here is mounted a few things. I got my control box screwed up against the side. I, um, I have a 12 volt supply for my pump uh, just sitting there from an old ham radio kit. Uh, that'll be drawn off of one of these power supplies here later. Uh, I got a five volt supply laying on there on the ground. That's running the only thing that takes five volts, which is my meter. I'll pull that off of a buck converter off of one of these here uh, later. Um, I tuned using the button and potentiometer. I made a separate plug for my cloud ray supply so that this little hole in the side down here, it's kind of hard to see, the hole right there, has a little potentiometer in it. And I tuned it such that, oh, this guy doesn't want to stick. There, so that max power on the potentiometer can only get me 23 milliamps, which is my technical max um, for, for uh, running of the tube. And let's see, now I got my little water flow meter there, not doing much. Uh, I was down to 13 degrees, it's very cold outside. Anyway, um, so then I took this and I put the tube on it. Pointed the tube, of course, wherever it points, right at the deal. Now this metal piece right here I'm working on, I have a um, beam splitter or a combiner that I'm gonna be putting in there and I had a mount, I was trying to jerry-rig for it. I figured I was gonna waste my time on that right now. I was gonna see if I can just get it aimed. So down there you see a lot of dots burned into a lot of pieces of paper. But I did the near and far routine, it took me about an hour total to get it all tuned up. Uh, actually a whole lot faster because I'm used to tuning that piece of junk over there. And by piece of junk, I, I lovingly refer to it because uh, it has been my greatest toy I've ever had, the MPCNC. But uh, it was never made for CO2 lasering, even though I, I managed to get it on there. <laughs> but getting those tubes, <clears throat> my mirrors lined up, bigger pain in the butt. So what did I have to do? Um, well, I did a little bit of tweaking here to get it to hit this guy. This one here, um, when it started hitting over here evenly, um, it was doing it um, too far to the right. And uh, so I picked up the mirror and I scooted the whole mount over a bit so it would hit more in the center. Uh, and I did that after I got the line perfect so it came two and four in the exact same uh, dot, as small as the dot as I could get. Um, I wound up having to re-aim it a little bit because in the process of moving this part, I moved the mirror a little bit. Once I got it, I got it right in the center of that over there. Then I went and, and uh, took out the tubing, the, the focus tube, and I put a piece of blue tape. Um, so you'll see um, pieces of blue tape with dots on it as I um, extended it down as far as it would go and put blue tape on it and tried to get it to where it would shoot to the center of the blue tape. Then I'd move it up and see if it was still in the center. I got lucky. The first time I finally got it centered in the blue tape took about nine, 10 shots. Uh, when I moved it up, it was in the center of the same hole. So I left it there, stuck my focal lens in and uh, called it good. Um, this is what I get. First off, I threw light burn at it and I put a little minion SVG, little Dave, he's sitting there. Um, he lays pretty good. I kind of like that. That was at uh, 500 millimeters a second setting. Now, I understand it never got there. Um, and it was at 10% uh, power. That's all I let it have because I didn't want to damage my new board down here. Uh, then, this is the image enlarged. As you can see, where it got a chance to really move, uh, the lines get a little lighter. I mean, where it got a chance to really cook, like um, along here, these lines right here, and this, the white circles of Dave's eyeball. See where it had to slow down to change direction? It got a little overburned. So I'm probably right at its point of, um, of uh, not really functional. Um, I would need to, uh, um, I'm not sure. Turning the power down is going to work, or just using wood that doesn't fry so bad. I'll have to look at that. But the same little image up there in the top 
and then I wanted to throw it all the way out here. Now, unfortunately, this little guy here, he's actually a little lower. I have not gone through and leveled the bed, plus this board, if you press on it, does have a little bit of give. So he was a little bit out of focus. I'm gonna say he was a little bit farther away than he should have been, but he's still crisp, eyes are still round. And then over here, this is the farthest, 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 farthest away you can get. And of course, it's on a different piece of wood, so it's hard to tell brightness of the lines. But uh, there he is. I got no problems with the way he turned out at all. So that's it. all four corners of my bed uh, tested out. And uh, next will be, I don't know, <laughs> well, next will be putting all things back together again. Uh, I think I definitely will um, clamp the laser tube um, and go ahead and cut those ties. Those ties are down tight and I think they're, they're where they're gonna be. And of course I'll do a couple more laser tweakings as I put everything else on. Then I'll go grab the cover that I made and put the cover back over it. Fun stuff.